Yes, that's it. Pretty little fish, barbless hook. Two cast, two strikes. Oh, yep, that's it. This is the fly. I'm going to tie in this video, Kelly's Emerger, and it proved very well during my latest fishing. It got bitten and destroyed a little bit, but it was still catching a lot of fish. Hook is the Ichi in size 12, model 1720, and I like it because of the overall hook shank, and because it has longer hook shank as you can see here, and fly needs that. Thread is Vivas, 8 odd in black, with preferably more thread on the spool than here. For trailing shock I'm using Ginger Variant Antron, because it imitates trailing shocks extremely well. For body and legs I will use CDC, mounted in a kind of CDC and elk pattern. Main wing would be all-purpose deer hair by Nature Spirit, and this is natural white tail deer. I love it, because it's easy to work with, it floats well, and it has neutral color. For the high vis wing, I will use again Nature Spirits, all purpose deer, and but it's in yellow this time because it pops out in water very well. Start by debarbing hook in the vise, position it horizontal, and then just one or two hook, uh, hook eye lengths shy of the eye. Start your fly and work your way with your thread towards the bend of the hook. You want to stop somewhere around halfway on the shank. Keep the thread flat a little bit. Okay, so around halfway mark, more or less. It's not so crucial to, to do that uh, precisely, accurately. Stop and add some Entron in Ginger Variant color. And uh, as I was saying before, Ginger Variant color uh, imitates hitten uh, that's found in those uh, shells, trailing shock. Uh, and it has kind of a little bit orangey color. So as you will see, I'm dubbing it a little bit thick and loose because I want to make a ball that is very easy to come out. And then you can just use your brush pretty roughly come out most of this forming like a shell around the hook and it kind of reminds of that uh, Gary Lafontaine sparkle pupa the shell that he makes although this kind is kind of easier way to make it and as you can see it tapers out pretty nicely I don't want it too long, but this is this is okay. It's gonna tangle sometimes around the hook, but it's perfectly fine. Don't worry about that. It's perfectly okay. Now, when it comes to CDC, for CDC, you want to uh, to choose something that's that has a little bit of length to it to cover all the way up until here. So it's good. We are going to tie it in like a CDC and elk type of a uh, abdomen plus legs. So for that, I'm gonna counter spin the bobbin holder counterclockwise. It will jump into my hands. I will catch CDC with two loose wraps. I can release my hand. I can pull out the CDC like so. Now, depending on the CDC uh, length, sometimes you want, sometimes you don't want to actually twist the CDC. It's perfectly fine, whatever you decide to do. Uh, by twisting it you make it shorter so if you have a longer CDC you want to twist it if you have shorter CDC you don't want to twist it anyways just cover the hook length with your CDC like so okay and then when you come into this leg part just let it loose that loose part it will actually make a lot of movement for this fly stroke those Barbs back, stroke them back. Okay, so as you can see, I'm getting 
uh, this CDC worked all the way till the end like literally last bit of it I, I used it and I got this nice like very very uh, lively effect by using those loose barbs as legs Now what I want to do is I want to put this rachis kind of sideways to increase the surface if you watch from the above to increase the surface so it's less likely for my uh, deer hair to oops I didn't cut it nicely for my deer hair to rotate okay let's go okay now I have it covered and I went back with my thread towards the back as I said I went back because I want to attach my deer hair over here now because I'm working in two clumps natural color and yellow color I want to actually use less hair per clump than I would usually do with just one color I'll cut the deer hair and that's kind of experience how much hair you want to use per fly it depends on the size of the fly or like how much buoyant you want to make it but what is important as you can see here there are a lot of under fur so just pull them out and pull those short hairs out but firmly grab the tips over here next step is to stack your hair and stack your hair by hitting in one direction you don't want to shake it like this it's better if you just do this firmly because all the hair will go downwards and then open your stacker and you have your hair aligned now for this I will leave those buttons in full length because I have something to work with now I don't want to extend hair as I would do if I was using this as a whole body because my body of the fly is rather short so I'll keep those wings a little bit short as you can see here so let me see like just those black tips should tip, should touch the, to the bend here now if you're using shorter shank hook then align your tips with shorter shank hook that's also fine don't don't worry about that counter spin the bobbin colder but this time not to flatten the thread but quite the opposite to make your thread jump to your hand left hand as you can see but also to make it a little bit uh, corded twisted so it can just dive into the hair a little bit deeper make one wrap with not too much tension second wrap with less tension now place your forefinger pointing finger to to grab it and prevent rotation and to prevent rotation even more pull upwards and pull up to pull down technique will actually prevent this from rotating further and what I like to do I like to make a couple of locking wraps one two three here just to keep everything in place until I work with my yellow hair here now cut pretty small clump much smaller than the previous one maybe one half of it or even the third repeat the process of removing the under fur and repeat the process of stacking always remove the hair in the direction you want to mount it on your fly nicely stacked now I want those away from me yeah and if I recall correctly I had like one two three extra wraps over here I want to remove them because they are like unnecessary then I want this on the top aligned with previous here and I'll repeat the process counter spin the bobbin holder make one two loose wraps pinch everything with your fingers pull up with your thread all the way to the breaking point make another wrap in the same direction then go through your buttons over here ensuring that those hairs won't rotate anywhere okay now at this point I'll just make a couple of wraps 
you can use your hand or you can use your uh, whip finishing tool to, to whip finish everything but make sure that you're using flat thread for whip finishing your fly because you're ensuring that your thread is going to lay nicely it will form nice head first wrap should go under the hair by making the nice head and kind of aligning those wraps together without twisting this loop the thread won't break the knot will be more secure and your fly will be more durable so one two three four every wrap goes in front of the previous one pull back and then I like to reverse like invert the hook make it under the tension as you can see just place my blade against the thread and it will cut it now I want to cut all those buttons that I don't obviously need here now let me see there is one straight here okay and this is important to work with here that has rather long buttons because it's easier to cut them nicely you can use your scissors or you can use uh, any kind of blade that's sharp enough to do this cut it make nice head fin it, it's finished fly now I didn't see those but it's not so important I will cut them to length and I will have my fly done okay Now, as you can see here, all those hairs are kind of starting, let me close the scissors, sideways, sideways, and then they're going in a semicircle all the way to, to another side. So they're, they're, they're making semicircle around your fly's body, but as you can see, you can barely see any yellow like this but if you fish with your fly and usually the fly will pop up with you here now this one is a little bit tilted to the side because I made a little mistake obviously here but it won't affect fishing so this is the effect you want you want this hive is easy to see of a fly that's that pops out in those runs that pops out in the morning in the, in the evening uh, you can experiment with the color of the hair uh, I find it white to be very useful as well unless you're fishing white water uh, this one kind of works out almost every time except when you have like sun sunset or sunrise and there is a yellowish light all around the river which is not so often when I fish because I, I usually fish that in shade and by the time sun, the sun is up it's above the mountain it's strong enough it's not yellow anymore so I don't have problems with that here but if the, the river is kind of open not between mountains uh, yellow color may not be the perfect one maybe pink or even black would be good so guys uh, that would be it I hope you like this video uh, please give it a like comment share and see you next week